It is rather hard to explain the goal of this expedition. This time there was no certain one peak we wanted to climb. And there was no certain one place we wanted to visit. Putarane is a huge uniform plateau in Siberia, just on the edge of Arctic Circle. It looks a bit flat on the map, but in reality it's often cut with deep canyons, which makes it very difficult to move around the plateau. A unique compilation of different ecosystems in one place, practically untouched by people, with no modern infrastructure anywhere near. So we wanted to see what it's like to find yourself in a place as wild, to do a long autonomous trek through areas you won't find in guidebooks. You see, this place has always been very complicated for any human activity. For a long time, the land around Putorana was inhabited only by Nganasans and Evenks, the indigenous people of the north, real experts in surviving those harsh conditions. The first big effort to explore and map that land began in 1919. That year, Urvantsev, among others, was sent there to explore prospects of mining coal. Being able to cross and map up to 10,000 kilometers of wild Siberia during some years, he has become the most prominent explorer of Russian Arctic. Soon they built a first house to be used as a base for further expeditions and coal mining. This house will later grow into the biggest northern town in the world, and it is the closest town to the plateau. That will be the end point of our expedition. But Rana itself does not have any infrastructure around. So to get to the starting point, we needed to go through Krasnoyarsk. There we boarded a pram which brought us closer to the plateau. And there is no disappointment in starting so far, because the pram itself is like a museum piece. It was built in 1953 in Germany and still operates in Yenisei. If you are paying attention, you are probably wondering, how the hell did the pram get to Yenisei from Germany? They brought it there through the Northeast Passage, with the help of tugboats and icebreakers. We are not going all the way up to Dixon this time though. Instead, we are heading to a village called Kureika, about 1500 kilometers north of Krasnoyarsk, which is still a huge distance. The port in this village burned down a while ago. So now they got a pretty interesting way of unloading people. There we are picked up by a prearranged diesel boat. That should take us 100 kilometers up smaller river to a town called Svetlogorsk. Now, just a few words about what to expect from traveling in Russia. The engine of our boat broke down. It got fixed in an hour though. After which we ran out of fuel halfway up. Never mind though, all problems were solved at some point. Tvetlogorsk is a source of local electricity. In 1975, the construction of hydroelectric plant began. It took almost 30 years to complete the project. Now the whole area gets electricity from here. Why is this important, you might ask? Now because of this plant, the town is a strategic zone, with a restricted access for foreigners. In other words, you have to pass bureaucratic hell to get permissions to pass through areas like Svetlogorsk. 
well, we need to change boat here to get past the dam. Some things stay constant over time. I mean those freaking Siberian insects. The reason we all have mosquito suits. Anyway, now we're heading to Dupkun Lake. It is 300 more kilometers up the river. And Dupkun is right next to Putorana Plateau. That is where we'll start walking. Here we have a small rest, and then the hard part begins. From here we'll hike for 250 kilometers to a pickup point at Lama Lake. And it is not exactly a chill sightseeing walk. It is more of a tedious routine. Of waking up early each day, deciding which way to go, and then walking for the rest of the time. These areas are not really properly described anywhere. So at that point we do not know exactly how we're going to go. Where we'll be able to go up and down the canyons. And where we can cross the rivers. So often have to scout the surroundings for the right path. Which is really why this place is so interesting. Different parts of the plateau have a substantial height difference. So we will be walking through some very different landscapes. As I said, the place is a combination of something like four different types of ecosystems. You can walk out of a thick forest and into an arctic desert in one day. And did I mention that we have to always keep one guard outside the tent to watch out for bears? Why exactly did we go there? Well, let me paint you a mental picture. Imagine a place absolutely wild. With no roads or buildings. Or people at all for that matter. A place with no Google Street View or 10 million photos online. Surely you can get some idea about it from maps or Wikipedia. But how is it going to look exactly? One of few places with still some room for unknown factors. A little touch of adventure and exploration. In a world for the most part fully described, photographed and digitalized to the finest detail. A place in the overcrowded, overpopulated world. Where you can truly be alone and on your own. Can you say that you often get that kind of experience? I guess this expedition is not about one certain place or peak or site. It is about the whole long way from Krasnoyarsk to Norilsk. Involving so many layers of preparation and organization. Visiting lots of different places, meeting many people of very different backgrounds and lifestyles, getting to know the history of the region along the way. So, the summers are pretty short in here. So far we have been lucky with the weather, but we could see that it was becoming less pleasant by the end. There are more rainy days and we have to spend more time waiting for dry windows. However unique the place is, we have to start heading to our pickup point and we have to get there in time. So 
So we spent 16 days here. Although it is indeed a beautiful place, but we are getting tired of constant physical struggle, required to move around. On the 17th day we are picked up from Lama Lake. There is a small tourist center on the lake and the river goes straight to Norilsk from here. Coming back from such a wild place, it is especially weird seeing forest scenery being replaced with industrial sites. Remember the first house built by Urvantsev in his expedition? Now it is a museum piece, in the middle of Norilsk, king of all industrial towns. The northernmost town of such size in the world. And the second biggest one above Arctic Circle, after Murmansk. A symbol of how far people can go when they need resources. Now that the expedition is over, we can say it has been pretty successful. Even just because of sheer amount of unique places we have seen on the way. kinds we would not necessarily have a chance of visiting otherwise.